Hey guys, Roman here from the Profits Indicator Suite. Um, we're going to be rolling out an update shortly to improve the uh, display of the order blocks. Um, I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. But I'm also doing a tutorial today on the order blocks, even if you don't use the Indicator Suite. Um, so you get a bit of an understanding, a bit of free alpha, uh, and just how this market um, ebbs and flows. And a part of that is order blocks. Um, they've been a part of every market. You'll find them in um, traditional markets the most, um, in gold, silver. Pretty much all markets you'll you'll find these and they are all just as powerful uh, in all markets so if you're not aware of them or not quite sure of all details of them i'll try and cover that in this video real quick so there's order blocks and order flows all right so order block is what we're covering today and we'll just go over the difference between the two so uh, we'll grab the path tool here so this here would call it an order block this little um dark candle there so that'd be a bearish candle because it closed uh, below the opening of that one right which would technically usually be a red candle if you're using a default um, color setting so from that point onwards um, we'd be looking to trade off that um, long or shorting uh, depending on how that plays out from that point onwards but how do you identify that what is that right so we're in an uptrend here nice impulsive move to the upside completely green trend or white trend in this case okay and then we also had another one form right here so that technically would be one too if we would ever to come back to that so we can always add that into our chart the indicators will do this for you automatically and identify them automatically um, but okay so that'd be an order block this is another order block so we can see what price has gone up another impulse move up and we've got this block here so it's like a uh, price has been blocked from going up or down and in essence uh, when it comes to the candle body uh, the close and open are very close to each other uh, and they usually look very similar to that the wicks can be all over the place sometimes and sometimes non-existent um, the wicks aren't too important it's more so just a block itself so because we're in an uptrend here we've got this block we've identified because price held up here before it carried on okay so if and when price comes flying back to it um, or retraces back to it in a healthy manner healthy manner is here right at one point it was closing sorry looking like it was going to close under here and then the bull saved it back up it closed above the order block which is the demand zone you could call it right which then showed strength from the bulls here which then had the nice impulsive move follow on after that you'll find that happens quite often an impulsive moves to the upside um, I can show you another quick example of that here so impulsive move up sideways retest push on right look over here so the same thing impulse move up sideways retest push on right the same behavior is this right here played out <clears throat> on a longer time frame here but it's ultimately the same thing the same logic there right so that's that's how we identify the order block it's usually um when trend is nice and clean to the upside and we'll have a nice sideways period or candle um that then becomes an order a level of support right so the longer price spends um time at a level the more volume happens at that level uh, which means more and more and more people bought and sold at that level uh, which then creates a level of support um, so if you were to use an indicator like vpvr which is um, on trading view i can show you where a uh, majority of the price action happened on a level right so it's saying based on these very large blocks that right here on a high time frame would be like an order block in itself um, but it's not it's not quite how it works right but that's that's how the um, price and time play out when price spends a lot of time at a particular price level then that volume builds up and then it becomes a stronger and stronger level of support and what's what we saw kind of play out here uh, as this as we spent a lot of time for right here when we finally came back to it to retest it right it was a high demand area right and then it's been up since so that's somewhat how order blocks work it, it's, it's pretty much um key levels within the market they usually have a lot of um, volume within that level uh, based on that price and time um and then when price revisits it it usually is a demand zone uh, the first or second time that you come back to that level so the other side of order blocks is order flow so let's just Go and color these in so this would be an order block okay so we can go all the way across just highlight that candle body we just want the candle body and we can see as we come to it rejects here rejects here 
finally flips it and away we go, right? So that became a really key level. What order flow is, is the, pretty much the inverse of that. It's free flowing. The, the trend is just flowing. There's nothing holding it back, all right? Whereas this here, order block, blocks price, all right? Or blocks the, the losing support. Um, or you can refer to it as a block as in, it literally is just a block, like a Lego block or something. Um, and then if you're in a sideways um, period, like say this, you could refer to the block as in literally just like a square period here that obviously is going to become a support if we fall back to that. All right. So there's many different ways of doing um, and looking at the, the wording of it or the, the, the meaning of it. Um, order flow is when price is flowing freely. Order block is when you're, you're being held up. All right. So we'll just go back and um, we'll just go back to old Bitcoin price action. I'll use this replay tool. All right. <clears throat> and we'll just go back through the chart and we'll just identify them as they play out and then see how price responds to them a little bit later on. Um, let's see through here. I'd call this one here an order block. So this is a green candle technically in a downtrend, okay? So what we can see here is price is falling. It got held up or blocked for a period of time and then fell further, right? When it came back up to it, it became a level of interest. Oh. And then when it finally closed above it, the candle body here, it confirmed that the market was actually uh, indeed flipping this into support and going to attempt to go for new highs, which it did. Okay. So you can see how the behavior of this plays out. It comes a very key level of support and resistance um, or demand and supply. So we'll just watch this play out um, over time and we'll identify them uh, and we'll go from there. And then we'll work out how to trade from these and actually use um, other confluence factors as well to improve those trades. Um, so you can hopefully make the most of the rest of this bull season. They work just as well in the bear market as well. Um, but the most money is made now in a bull market. So we'll let this play out. Um, and we can also work out actually what creates these. So what I'll do is I'll just throw like a Fib in, a Fibonacci level. So I'm just going to go from the swing high to the swing low here, down here. And I'll just marry that up. So I've gone from this high to this low. That's a swing low. And then we've got these levels on the way back up. Let's get rid of the log scale. So what can create an order block is actually um, external factors like Fibonacci or previous, if we're looking left, maybe previous order blocks or previous daily opens and closes, weekly open and closes. Um, or it could be a yearly level with a yearly opened. Many, many different factors can create these order blocks. Um, usually something that holds price up at that point. So it could be a, a profit taking target like a, a 1.618 extension from the impulsive move here. Um, it could be a Fibonacci level uh, on the way back out of that. So if this didn't exist, that was just a black candle and we got rid of this. What we could see after the fact is, okay, so we've got that move that's played out. From that point onwards, we want to watch what price react to these levels. So we see it's extremely respecting this level here which is the 618, which is the usual rejection. It's come back, held the 382, reclaimed the 618. So technically this candle here, this period, would be an order block. So we can actually see that the 618 as support has allowed price to be defended here and held above, held above, which has created a level of interest um, if you weren't using Fibonacci. So if you had no idea this was a 618 level and it was just an order block to you like that, you be like, well, I'm going to buy the order block retest, right? It, it's just, it could be as simple as that. So you had no idea it was actually a key Fibonacci level as well. So they, that's how you can find, um, sorry, how order blocks can form. You can have many forms of confluence of profit taking or buying um, at, at a level um, during trend. And that will just allow price to get caught up there and not flow, right? So it's order block versus order flow. So what we'll do is we're trying to identify some uh, moving forward in this. And we'll press play and then just see how this um, plays out a wee bit. So first we can see, here we go, get the rectangle tool. We've only got the one candle here. There wasn't really a series of candles prior to this one. Um, I'd call this more of a demand zone than I would an order block, but I'm pretty sure the indicator would pick that up as an order block. And we can see when price came back to it here, was brought up, it was a demand zone, right? Slapped straight back out of it, and the second time went under and then closed above. When um, that happens, when you do go under and then close above, that's usually a bullish sign. 
Um, but when the wicks are getting lower, like this, you could probably assume it's also getting a sign of weakness. So here, um, it's already been tapped into twice as demand. So my instinct from this point on would be assuming that we may either lose this and then maybe retest the swing low here um, and go for maybe like a head and shoulder pattern, as in this could actually be a top. Uh, or we'll just see how it dances around that auto block level there and also the demand zone on the bottom down here of that candle body. So I'll press play, let that play out. So it did come down. Um, we've retested the low through here. Got a nice SFP pin um, bar here, right? Nice huge wick to the candle body, swung the low of this. So it's a bit of an SFP. But we're also getting that head and shoulder appearance here now, right through our auto block. Since the um, price has played out, there's been no new order blocks. It's just price action. So we just press play from here. So what we see here is we've been an impulsive move to the uh, upside of our um, order block, right? So it's reclaimed that, it's rejected the pattern, the head and shoulder pattern. Uh, now we're pushing to the upside. As it pushed up though, we did get this one candle here of interest, right? So this did close bearish, opened higher, um, and then close lower. Uh, so that's a bearish doji. Uh, so that's an order block now. And it's also a bit of a key level. If we were to look left, right, price action has previously played here. So we'll keep an eye on that and we'll just keep moving forward. Um, and maybe just drag this out as well. Sweet. So as this plays out, we just want to respond to how it plays. Um, and let's see what, see what happens. Cool. So we've got a, uh, this is an evening star reversal top, right? So we've got the SFP to the upside on the daily time frame. So that 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 set up, we got the impulse candle up. This one closes lower than the open of this, but it swings the high of the wick. That's an SFP. That's usually a top, uh, and that's usually we want to hedge our longs or look to take some profit. Um, so we can see how this plays out now. So if you were long, you would have been probably stopped out here. Sorry, if you were short, you probably would have been stopped out here. Uh, but this is also, again, yet another SFP. So it's looking pretty ugly. But there's no order block here. We could say maybe this is a demand zone through here. And maybe that's why we've got like a bit of a, a bounce off that. But it's not really an order block, so that's not what we're doing today. So we've got another SFP. Well, now we're getting that sell-off reaction, right? So that took out the early shorters, but we still get that same uh, move down. We've since come down to this order block, and it was brought up. Um, let's see how this plays out more. So after being brought up, it actually ran up here, and then has since come down to this another level here. All right, so that's a pretty serious throwback. Um, looking pretty ugly. Usually how I'd play this from this point onwards would be on a lower time frame. So I've got this daily level down here I'm looking at. And then I've also got this daily um, demand zone. Sorry, not demand zone, the order block here that I'm interested in. So if we can get a close above the order block, that'd be great. Um, if we can get a close above this area here, that'd be, that'd be okay. Ideally, you'd want to be looking at the lower time frame and see how that's playing around the daily order block. So we just press play um, a little bit. Let's play out some. So we've actually bounced perfectly off that order block here. Okay. So if we were to drop down to say the four hour time frame and have a look at that, we saw this huge pin with a huge SFP. It swung the low. Um, huge shakeout. So we've probably got bullish divergence playing out here. So we've got a lower low here. So if we throw on RSI here, which is what we'll touch on a little bit later, but I'll just show you the power of this. When you've got this daily order block, I mean, this is a daily level, all right? We could also probably say this is a four hour order block here, this one, all right, which has been tested once already. So trend was up, order block, trend is up, comes back to it, bounces, holds it, holds it. So you've got both daily and four hour bulls buying here. And when you come back to it, they're buying again, all right? But you've also got that bullish divergence down here. So price candle bodies made a lower low. Over here, the RSI made a higher high. So it's telling you that as you're coming into the demand zone of the order block on the daily and the four hour, that bulls are stepping in. So you're looking for that bullish price action off it. Um, so on the four hour, if we were to get rid of RSI here, and actually zoom into this, 
All right, we can see that this candle body closed above the swing low over here. So as soon as this came in as a close above that, if you went really long, that was your signal to get long. All right, you got the bullish divergence, you got the daily order block, you got the four hour order block. Um, reclaim the range. Uh, if you look at this as a trading range, I reclaimed it, retested it. You could. That's a very, very clean setup. And these will happen a lot in a bull market. Um, they've been happening all of 2020, all 2021. Um, very easy setups. So we're seeing, we'll go back to the daily time frame. I'll just get rid of all these um, drawings. We can see how that order block has already played a key role in trend continuation. So for a period here, all right, price was blocked up, rejected the head and shoulder pattern, pushed up to a new high. All right, came back and retested that level and has since responded nicely. Uh, and you can see it never got a close below the daily order block, which is usually a, a key sign of bullishness. Uh, and then same thing with a bearish market um, that when you come back up to a, a key level, like a, say this is the uh, bearish setup, when it comes back up to it and then rejects off it, that's usually the bearish retest before you fall on. So this will be classified as like a bullish retest or an SR flip. Uh, it's looking extremely good. And the fact that it bounced back out of the trading range of the head and shoulder pattern to the left here, this we could, we could have called this entire thing just a trading range through here. The fact that it bounced off the order block and then closed back above the range is very bullish as well. So something's worth um, keeping in mind. So we'll just move on from that. Um, we'll just highlight this guy just in case this becomes a, a whatever comes next. I'm not sure what plays out. I want to press play here. All right, so we're getting an extremely bullish reaction, right? That which is that's to be expected because we saw the the the, the lower time frame behavior, the bullish divergence, um, a perfect setup. All right. So we'll just press play a little bit more. I might just slow this down a wee bit. Okay, cool. So we've got a period here where price has been blocked. Okay, so we could technically say that this is ready to be an order block if price was to continue um, or to go sideways from here. All right, we've got a bit of an SFP here on the daily, right? But it has closed above this price action down here. So it's not too scary looking, but it is noteworthy. We'll probably go sideways um, or continue to the upside, and this is just an order block. We'll just see how this plays out. So this closes a pin, right? Little pin bar. It also swung the low of the SFP candle. So we can see this rejected the SFP, and now we're getting the uh, response to that. So we'll keep the order block there. We'll just keep watching how this plays out. So price has gone up. We've got a block. Price has carried to go up. This is now a confirmed order block. Uh, and as this closes like this or above this, then this is pretty much confirmation that it is an order block. It becomes a demand zone while you're above it. So we do have an SFP here, right? So this candle wick closed, sorry, it was higher than the previous. Candle body closed below this body, um, open. But we did test the demand and it held. So that's not a bad thing. Uh, if anything, I'd expect it to come back and test it a second time uh, and then bounce. Um, or flag under it and then reclaim it and then go. So that would either look like this, would either come back to it and then bounce off it, right? Or we'd lose it, come back, and then we end up being some kind of like bull flag off it. But that's, a, that's a definitely a really key level. We could probably also call um, the level that we've just created here an order block as well now, uh, if price was to continue to the upside. We'll just mark it in and be ready for it. Because while the trend is to the upside, when we get a random black candle or bearish candle like this one, they become these um, levels you want to be paying attention to. So we've closed below the open of the previous one. Now this is quite important. See how this candle body here closed below the opening of the, sorry the the the, yeah, the open of that one. So it's showing a little bit of weakness there. Um, by the looks of this, it's it's pretty ugly looking. Back in 2017, it looked like Binance had a lack of um, volume and liquidity because you're getting this candle open up here when they really closed down there. So, watch how this plays out. So, we've come back to our demand zone, which is our order block, and we're getting a bit of a bounce off that. We could go down the four hour and see how that played out on the lower time frame. All right. 
So it was actually an SFP of the previous candle, but not of this price action. But that is a nice pin, and that's usually what we're looking for um, off an order block. Um, or the other variation of the pin with the order block is when the wick goes down through it, but the candle body itself closes above it. So when it goes through and washes the whole range, but then closes back above, that's usually pretty bullish uh, because it's taken out all the supply that was available in that um, zone. All the people's stop losses or... It's usually a nice um, a nice area for people to freak out at if you can definitely wick underneath it temporarily and then end up closing above it. Because it, usually that's the most fearful moment for um, easy money for the, the market makers. So looking at this on the 4 hour, we came back to it and retested it. Um, there's nothing bullish or bearish about the sideways price action. We're in an uptrend and this is just consolidation after a uh, impulsive move to the upside, right? We can see we've got flag price action here, which is ultimately just a reaction to that um, daily order block, right? So price and time spend a bit of time here on a lower time frame. It looks like a bit of a, a, a symmetrical triangle bull flag kind of play here. And now this is just further continuation sideways because we're in a impulsive move to the upside. We should expect further upside. You always trade the trend. So we'll press play here. And okay, now we've got some upside action. So this candle body, this one here, closed back in the order block. So that was a sign of strength. And we can see that play out here. We'll just keep pressing play and watch how this plays out some. Okay, it's extremely bullish. Getting a crazy candle here. This could become an order block. The wicks are irrelevant when it comes to these order blocks. We close back in it, and we've since got further um, price action to the upside. Pretty crazy price action. We are in a parabolic market. Alright, it's getting pretty nuts now. When price and candles get like this, um, usually tops aren't too far away or some kind of pullback isn't too far away. But in saying that, that's why we trade the trend. We don't want to assume and then trade based off our assumptions. We want back-tested strategies that allow us to take a trade, like for our bullish divergence down here off a key level that allows you to ride with all this and not have to constantly think is this the top or is this the top I'm trying to get a short in right because you're already long from back here you get to enjoy the whole ride so we haven't had any more um, black candles bearish candles at all in any of this trend here but what we will do is just drag these across to the right because they might become um, relevant once this market pulls back. Because anything that starts looking like this, especially in crypto anyway, usually comes back to these levels. So we'll just mark them out uh, and watch how this plays out some more. Jesus. Alright, so we've got a candle here. Um, it's not essentially an order block yet. But the trend is up, we do have a black candle. It hasn't closed yet. We're going to assume it closes here uh, and then just watch how the price goes from that point. So it did close at that level uh, and has since pulled back. It didn't continue on, so it wasn't really an order block per se, uh, but this will now become a, a form of resistance uh, until it's flipped. But it, yeah, let's press play. We've got an SFP pin here. All right, so it swung the previous wick. Close back within the body. Gone for a uh, morning star reversal here. So this is more of a supply zone than it is a um, an order block. Okay. Maybe we can call this entire period here, those two candles, more of an order block. Uh, could be relevant later, but let's not do that. We'll get rid of both because I don't think that's an order block. You'll probably find that it's a, it's a key level though, right? So it's more of a supply zone until it's not. But it's not really an order block because it's not a single candle and trend like this uh, or a peer, period where the trend just went perfectly sideways like this for a bit. Right. So the market's getting pretty crazy. So we're going to SFP again. All right. We've seen this before, haven't we? Where was that back? 
there. And when this um, was put in, we got the pin bar that closed bullish back in the candle, um, which negated that, right? So let's see what comes next. Because if we carry on up, this could become an order block. So I'll just press play. So we're completely rejected and sold off. If we look really, really closely, see how it's close below the previous candle close? Right. On a smaller time frame, we can go have a peek at that. Tried to get in. Rejected on the 4 hour here. So if you were watching it on the 4 hour, there's actually a 4 hour order, order block right here. And it failed to close back above that. See how it rejected it? Couldn't get above it. So when combining multiple time frames, order blocks is like we did down the bottom to get that nice four hour um, along from all the way back down here. That inverse setup is now available up here, right? So if there was bearish divergence throughout this, we could be looking to short now because it's failed to reclaim it uh, on the four hour. It's failed to reclaim it. The dailies um, sold off and rejected it. And we're now back at previous demand, um, but that's not an order block per se, right? So I'll just press play. We're now trading back under the range, trading range of the um, consolidation period, which looks like a flag. Uh, so if we were to go to the, I'll just draw this in, like some kind of ascending flag there, right? Like higher lows, top, a flat top. So it's consolidation sideways, that was bullish. We're now trading back under um, that period of consolidation. That was a trading range of some form. We're now back under that. So that's extremely bearish. Um, that's usually how tops are formed or uh, before you get some kind of decent um, one, two, three, like a three wave pullback. So we've got that in, we've got our levels in. We'll get rid of the SFP here. Um, cool, cool, cool. Like before we mentioned that this is a supply zone. So while we're underneath that, with a possible rally back to it, we want to be paying attention to this, this zone. We could either say maybe these two candles was more of the order block, um, or maybe just this, this candle here was more of the order block. You want to be paying attention to that, because we've already seen price respond to it quite well here. So we could, we could call that maybe our order block, in the essence that price did respect it for a period here. But price didn't continue, right? But it did block price, so it depends on which uh, approach you want to use to it. Moving forward, we've got a nice pin come off after a doji. So this is usually saying that there's still a exhaustion when you see this kind of price action. Um, it's it was sold off once, we tried to rally but didn't. Um, went to sell off again, got brought back up by the bull. So this is looking, this would be like a long setup. I'd probably look to long this candle here purely based off naked price action. Um, we could probably even use the trend line tool here. Once you were bullishly retested that on a smaller time frame. So maybe this one of these two candles here. We could look to get long on that maybe. Uh, we can also look at the RSI again on the four hour. Four hour RSI with daily uh, is great. So we can see that the RSI here has made, um, so the price has made a lower low where the RSI has made a higher high. So we've actually got four hour bullish divergence in that. Uh, it looks like a bit of a bump and run or a broadening uh, descending wedge kind of price action through here. So definitely be expecting a rally off that. I'm looking to get long on that. So it's the same setup as down here. Uh, this one, exactly the same setup, right? Except this time, we're not expecting to get any higher than this. And this will probably be where I look to take profit uh, until this has been flipped into support. So I'd look to get out, uh, take profit, or head short if we reject here, um, because we have now lost this trading range as resistance. So as we come back into it, that's more a uh, more of um, a sell event than it is a buy event, especially after the chart looks like that, right? So let's keep that in mind. Um, we're looking to take profit in the demand, sorry, supply zone through here. Uh, or head short if we were long and going to keep it long. Um, yeah, let's see how we play out. So we'll wait for the next couple daily closes. 
Got a nice impulsive move straight from the um, the level through here. Straight into that um, supply zone, we can call it. Order block. So we can see we've come to the high of the order block. Right, with swing failed, with SFP'd, the previous wick closed back below it. So that's actually looking like rejection, right? So we'll see how this plays out. Because you've come back up to this level um, as resistance, you're expecting resistance, and that's where you want to hedge. A bad, sorry, it wouldn't be a bad place here to actually hedge or, uh, or take some profit on your long. All right, so we'll see how this plays out again. So it has sold off. You've got the evening star reversal kind of set up. Um, you'd be looking for probably some further downside. We'll see how we play out. This candle here could, be, could, could become relevant soon. Right, because we've got two two red uh, or two blacks in a row. And then we've got our um, uh, a white candle forming. So the trend is down, some sideways price action. Um, this may play out later. We'll just want to mark it because the indicator will definitely mark that, I reckon. So we've sold off. So our head short or our take profit is looking really good. Right, so we made the right choice once the SFP came in at supply. Um, to head short or uh, go short or take profit on your long or how whatever you wanted to do. We can also see here that there's now a lower low forming, right? Candle body. So trend is definitely now locked in. Um, there was this lower lows forming and a lower high forming. So trend is now reversed essentially as well. Uh, we just want to keep an eye on uh, something like RSI. So that's a lower low with price. We'll check the four hour though. That's that's okay. That's interesting. Um, let's get rid of this RSI. So that was our previous rally. We traded that right. This rally price is actually the same level. However, the RSI has made a higher high. So RSI is showing a bit of strength here. Um, it could be a different time frame, or maybe we're missing it. Maybe it's a 12 hour. There we go. The 12 hour's got the divergence here. So if we look at it from the candle body here, this one's slightly lower, while the RSI is making a higher low. So we'll be cautious here and maybe looking for a, um, a long setup. So we'll go back to this. Oh, four hour, four hour. It's like a bit of a typical flag, but the, the impulse move is pretty weak. Let's come down to that four hour dem, um, order block or demand zone through here. All right, and it's bounced off that with RSI making a higher high. So we jump back up to the daily and just have a look. So we've got a response off this level. I think they, with that 12 hour divergence, uh, the four hour demand holding, uh, there's nothing really here on the daily per se. All right, if we look left, there's nothing over here. So on a daily uh, level, there's not much. It could be a Fibonacci level. So what we could do is fib from the low to the high here. Right. So it bounced off the 618. And it's come back to the 0 0.5. So it's a 0 0.5 bounce. Um, it's already rejected off the 236 once. Curious. I can't remember exactly how this plays out. Let's press play. Um, where's it down here? Did that close above. So again, we talked about it before, and this is relevant. This is a swing low, all right. So if we're on a, if we go to the line chart, this is the easiest way to look at this and not confuse yourself. When you're in the line chart, and you reclaim the the swing low of the line, right, with a bullish retest of some form. That's usually a sign of an SR flip, and you'd probably want to look to, maybe on a lower time frame, uh, look for a long. Um, until this is obviously put in better structure to go uh, a longer time frame long. But after being that nut to that long, you, you really want to be quite cautious when the trend is down lower high uh, and lower lows here, right? So we'll jump back out to the uh, candle bodies. We can see prices consolidating above um, a key, key level through there. Go back to the daily real quick. And we can see that price, uh, we can actually probably put this in as a level maybe. This guy here. 
I'm not sure if it's going to come become a level or not, but let's get rid of these lines. Clean this up a wee bit. Just in case it comes flying back up. Alright, so we've got our key level up here. Um, we're good. We'll press play. Cancel that. So we've come up. We close back above the price action over here. Alright, so we're back above the, the apex as well of the where these two trend lines would meet if you were doing this as some kind of ascending triangle or however you want to look at it on a lower time frame. We've closed back above that, uh, which is looking strong. However, this is also a um, an impulsive move to the downside here. So we want to be looking for that rejection level, um, which is the 618, which is rejected once there, which is also that order block uh, range. So we've got above it. Um, I might just make this the default 786, what people usually look at. It's a little bit higher there. Curious. Alright, so we can press play here. Uh, at this stage, there's potential either for continuation to the upside, alright, because this is impulsive to the upside. We've closed back above this range here. We've also had a sill event into the um, demand zone, right? So it's tried to fall under the 618 and then didn't. This is also the same kind of setup as this here, which is referred to as the evening star reversal. So we're going to watch out for that here as well. So it's showing weakness. Right, so if we close back below the 618, uh, especially below this candle body here, um, we're going to be pretty concerned because if you've trend, um, trend change, which we did, we had the lower lows and the lower high, then this would be more so a bear flag if you're rejecting the 618 on that second push up like that. Right, which means that you'd have an impulsive move to the downside equivalent to this from, the point, from that point of break. If we were to trade in this like a, a pattern trader, right? So you'd be looking for some kind of pullback, maybe to the, this 8.4k or something, maybe lower. I'm not sure, but it doesn't doesn't have to play like that. But I'd be now concerned if this closes below the 618 and that order block, and the evening star reversal um, after having this huge impulse move to the downside, especially after a parabolic run. So we have broken down. Um, this now looks like a bear flag. Um, then it does anything else. We do have a higher high here, which is quite common on the bear flag, right? Usually there's no more highs from this point onwards. Um, and then some, if we have, if we were to lose trend incline, there are a bit of a meme trend lines are, but if we do lose that, then I'd be more and more inclined to think that this would be a further downside move. Um, and your measure move could actually then become the point of break at distance. So we'll press play. So we essentially um, had our order block level here, All right? Price came to it once, twice, the third time not so lucky. We did have a pin bar here, and this is somewhat in no man's land, but at the same time it was off the 382 level. So if we were to come back up to this, we'd be looking for some form of rejection um, for the lower high if that was to play out. Usually they look like this when a bear flag forms. Usually it's an impulse move down, you get up, right? Sometimes you get a lower low and then you go up and then you get the, it looks like a hidden shoulder and breaks down like that. Uh, or the, the other variation of that is we actually end up with a higher high, right? And it looks more like that. That's usually the two ways that price carries on to the downside. Uh, sometimes you get the lower low with divergence, which sets up for a nice clean long trade. If you don't get the divergence, then it makes it a wee bit harder to try and get long in these, um, these lows. So we can see that uh, we've washed this level here now pretty much. Uh, it's worked as demand twice. That's, that's no longer really relevant. Um, and we'll just throw that in. I think what we'll be mostly looking for now would be... Um, see if this candle or this candle. You can even combine the two. Maybe get the swing low here plus this candle. I'm going to go that one again actually. So I deleted that before but... Because that's a swing low as well, I'm going to add a bit more weight to this one than this one here that's in more in no man's land. So we'll press play. So what's relevant here is this candle body and the swing low, that candle actually closed below them. Okay, so that, that candle down, even though there's a decent wick in that and it did SFP this, right, it still closed lower than that order block. So it's got some proving to do. Um, 
and this level could be a level that. So just keep an eye on that now that there's potential back to the upside. We're literally just playing these order blocks in and out. Same rejection of it here. We can look at a lower time frame and see how it rejected, right? So it came up to it. SFP, the previous price action, sold off. So that was looking pretty bearish, to be honest. Uh, and then we also ended up with a lower low down here, just. And the RSI is making no real meaningful um, divergence. The divergence is there, but it's not really meaningful because we're underneath this key level. We're not bouncing off it. We're underneath it. And it's, it's, it's kind of in no man's land as well. Um, if you want a divergence, if you wanted a nice divergence trade to go long off this, you want it more down like here maybe, where pricing came down like that, where it's at the extreme lows of the price action from like back here, right? So this this price action here, when we're at the extreme lows of that, off like a key support from back here, that's your divergence setup trades of confluence, all right? But when it's just like this in the middle of this price action like that, to me, divergence is, that's not really bullish divergence. It's divergence by all means, but it's, it's not something that I'd look to trade. So look, we've got that measured move. I'll bring that across. Clean up all this. Get rid of that. So if we reject this daily level on the four hour here, we're looking for further downside, right? Because this now just looks like a really, really clean bear flag. Price has come down, right? The high, the higher low, the higher high. Rejecting and losing trend here, and then downside. Usually I take my measured move off the um, the high of the swing, so that third one. So it usually be here, or the trend retest, uh, if I was to be trading this. And then I'd be looking to take profit or long uh, once it reached it down here. So I'd make this more of a zone between that and that. So this is now a level I'm looking to either long out of, uh, or take a profit out if I've gone short up here. All right, so we'll see how this plays out. We'll go back to the daily time frame and just see how this plays. We're getting an indecision candle. Just keep it in mind, we're looking at this candle here, all right, and how the price action um, plays with that. Oh. So it's closed in it, showing weakness, especially after rejecting out in the 4 hour with the SFP on the... Um, We've sold off. All right. So trend is now confirmed, f cooked. All right, the high, the lower high, and the lower low on a higher time frame. Right. The macro trend is now looking really cooked. Press play. What we can see here is this level that we marked in earlier. All right, has become a level of demand through here. So if we go down the four hour time frame and actually have a look at that and how price responded to it. Oh. Came into it once, above, twice, above, three times above, right? I really, really had a um, bias dipping in here. And we've seen this, since we had a rally out of that. Uh, we're on the four hour here. All right, there's no really, there's nothing, nothing really to go off, but we'll see how this plays out here. Actually, I've marked that box of where they're going to go, right? So I'll can delete those lines, try and clean up this chart. We're expecting price to come down to here. Cool, so we've got the... Um, we've, actually, we've actually got some structure here that we'd, I'd probably take into note as well. Is it the, the swing high, the impulsive move. All right, swing low, lower high, all right, lower low. This would be the bullish setup. If we can try and reclaim this level here uh, and make it look pretty... Um, uh, bullish, but we'll see how this plays out. So that would be a potential bull flag continuation price action. The, the low, the lower low, the, the lower high, the lower high again, and the higher low, off, usually off like a key order block, something like that. So that'd be our bullish setup we're looking for. Um, you can probably look to long off this. If this candle body closes like that, you can look to go long and try and grab either the run to the bearish retest before it rolls over, um, or Head short here and then allow your long to carry on through just in case this is the, the bull flag of the century kind of thing set up. So we're seeing, um, is it tempting to go back up? Alright, let me check the 4 hour time frame. Is everything relevant? 
and see in triangle forming here, right? And we can see on the four hour time frame, there's an order block through here. And price has been really respecting this order block. Came back to it, bounced out of it, bounced out of it, bullish retest. Now it's heading up. So not a bad place to get long through here. Um, I'd be looking to, I probably would have longed off this, right? Off the, off the four hour order block here. So we'll go back to the daily. We'll come off this daily order block. We're expecting a, um, a rally off it at least. The four hours saying they expect a rally. Market structure says expected at least a bearish retest. Um, and we'll go from there. All right. So press play. We've come back up. We've swung the lows of over here. All right, so if we just draw that in. It's not really an order block itself. Um, it's, it's just a bit of a bearish retest, right? So nothing, nothing too spectacular. If anything, we're expecting that bear flag, because that's that's not bullish price action, right? So if this was gonna be that, if, if this was gonna be that huge bull flag, we wanted we wanted to see this reclaim that level. It's it's rejected before that level. It's looking pretty weak. RSI is looking pretty weak. Um, we'd be expecting more so the bear flag to play out, which was the come down. The up and the down, right? So further downside down here to get to those targets. Again, we can see response from our order block, right? Some low time frame buying. When it comes back to it, comes back to it. You see that demand kick in, right? But at the same time, there's no divergence here on the daily, right? So the RSI is making a higher high. So there is divergence here on the daily, but it's in no man's land. It would be nicer to see this like in this price action here. But there is a, it's weak. It's not from the low of the RSI like down here. That's usually when you have the nice divergence when the RSI is quite uh, overextended. This is as to me, it just it doesn't look very good, right? Cool. So this is a bullish retest in a sense of this from bullish structure, uh, but we failed to get that bullish break up to the upside here. So until price is really trading back above uh, this key level, say maybe through here, um, or this order block would be the key one, that order block here. Once the price gets back, back above that, then we'll be looking for longs again, because um, ultimately we'd be in the trading range, if we can find it here, or back of this trading range, right? So if we to plug all of that in this is just a trading range that's a, like a spring or a utad all right come back into the trading range utad these are springs so if and when we can get back into that especially above that order block then i'd be looking to treat this more as like a sideways range maybe then we end up up or whatever but until then we're just in this um vacuum really between this order flow zone because there was no order blocks throughout that period right because it was all just flowing, there's no real key levels throughout here that I'm looking at other than this one here. But it's already tested it twice, and the structures didn't continue upside. So, because of all of that, I'm not actually too bullish here. Um, I'd be looking for SFPs further to the downside, if anything, because uh, that trend is down now. So we've got an SFP there on the daily. All right, so it's swung the previous high of this daily, closing the candle body of that. Um, if this closes as a pin, something like this where it swung the previous price action and closed here, and maybe we get a little further upside because it kind of rejects or negates the SFP price action. If it closes down here though, then it's definitely like we should expect capitulation. So it closed as the pin, uh, so it kind of rejected the SFP here. Uh, if anything, let's keep an eye on the swing low over here. Let's see how that plays out. Alright, so this just looks like again a further um, bear flag. So I'm just going to clean up the chart real quick um, and just redraw in these order blocks over here. So this one's already done its work a few times. We can say maybe this whole fucking range is one. Um. This is like a block in price, like water flow, a block through here. So maybe we'll just call that area here as one. Cool. 
So we're now in a downtrend. We're, just, and we're playing the order block levels by levels. So the upside, this is the one we want to look at and be concerned about. The downside, we've already marked them out. Press play. This was an SFP to the previous price action here and the previous price action uh, on this candle here. Closed higher. Had the potential there for a Morningstar um, reversal, but trend here is down. Have failed the bullish structure already um, by making this new low here. All right, so if this was going to be a bull flag, the impulse move up, the down, the up, the lower low. Usually you start reclaiming from this point onwards. If not, you get some form of bullish divergence and then reclaim and then carry on. It's failed to do that. The market structure has changed. Uh, and we could actually call this a second bear flag in a sense. So bear flag one was here, right? Looks like that's already somewhat played out. I think there's targets down here somewhere. Um, we can probably do that cleanly actually. Let's actually work out where that bear flag was. So that's the impulse of the entire of the impulse move to the downside. Right, usually from where trend breaks or the low high, the swing. So it actually brings us to, the, to this water block. So the huge macro structure here that this played out actually has a target of down here, the $6,000 mark, and the lower high after having the two highs, right? So bear flag looks like uh, this. Comes down, the swing high, the higher low, the higher high, and then you get that head and shoulder appearance where you get the lower high, and it's usually um, ugly with trend or it breaches trend uh, and then swings down. I usually, the way I trade, as I usually use the impulsive move like that, the distance of that from the point it rejects that from the, the, the structure, and that's my target. So I've got the 618 here, I've got the order block here, and I've also got um, my bear flag target down there, right? So that's one bear flag. We've got a second bear flag. The second one is this move down to the downside here, right? And then we go to a symmetrical triangle. So we can see here, there's a um, trend, clear trend there, and then clear trend here. So when you get a symmetrical triangle type formation in a downtrend, there's usually con excuse me, it's usually a continuation of the trend. So there's a higher chance to actually break out in the direction that it came from. So this would have a um, a measured move down to the downside as well. Um, usually from the point of break with symmetricals. So that's going to be much lower down here at this this 3k kind of mark. Cool, cool. So we're just going to mark that level. Does it line up with anything back here? Pretty much it's this price action back here. All right. So that's probably going to be a level as well that I'd look at um, for breakdown. It seems nuts to pull back this much, but the market's done it many times before. That's why I always factor this kind of information in. So we've got our order block here. We're about to lose that level. If we were to lose this level, this one here, we'd assume we come straight back to this one. All right, because where the order flow happens, there's nothing to block price. Where the order flow happens, there's nothing to block block price. So when price came back to it back here, it just filled that whole vacuum void up. And over here as well, now that we're losing it, we should just come to this one. So we came straight to that one. So we've got an SFP here um, of interest. This candle pretty much come to this, this this level of demand throughout here. We can call that an order block in the actual sense of a block where price has literally just became a block. And that's why we could say essentially that that was the um, key order block over here that bounced off that or that little white candle we had marked in. So we're getting a pin bar here, right? It's off this demand area and the SFP, the nice wick. Something like that doesn't look too bad. Um, I wouldn't probably blindly take that trade. Maybe wait until you're back above this price action here. So that particular candle, I might just mark that in as that black candle right there. If and when we can get back above that, maybe I'd look for it along. Um, but with trend down like this and it looking pretty ugly, um, I'd rather be in a no trade than trying to force a trade. So if we can reclaim that, we're looking for a long because that's a, an order block here. Uh, if not, if we bearishly re uh, reject that, uh, and then sell off, um, then that's a really weak long. So we rejected it once, and then closed bullish. We've reclaimed it, and now we're dancing with this one. Uh, here we go. 
So we can see we've rejected this one. It came into it, and it has since then rejected off that one here. But you'd be expecting it definitely in the next candle to be black um, or a pullback. If, if it closes like that, definitely a pullback. Um, and then you just play maybe uh, the time frame from there. So we come up to this sort of block, and we see that price is rejecting it. So if you go in this lower time frame, four hour, we see an SFP here, evening star reversal. Let's come back to this one here and cleanly bounce off that. So it's, an, it's trying to SR flip this, but at the same time it's rejected the order block up here. So this is the rounded bearish retest. Um, and then we'll see just how this plays. So we'll go back to the daily. We're expecting the next candle to be black. So we've gone for an evening star reversal here, but we have closed inside this candle, all right? So we didn't close under it, we closed inside it. So that's weakness, but at the same time, it's not like we've lost that level. So the bulls could push back, um, or maybe come down for maybe further bullish divergence between like say here and here. And that would be a nice level to go long off of. We could do to get that divergence, because it'd be off this key, key um, major level back here. I mean, you'd be going for the upside. We'll just see how this next candle plays out um, and go from there. So we've gone from order block straight to order block. Just zoom in really quickly. They actually close inside that one, right? See how they they got the close just inside? This kind of information is quite relevant, okay? Um, if you can get a close inside, it, it's usually a sign of strength in an essence. Um, if this one closes back out of it, uh, it's pretty ugly, but it, this could be essentially referred to as consolidation underneath resistance, which is not a bad thing. Um, that's usually a, quite a healthy thing. So if you see uh, something like that's pretty much what an ascending triangle is, right? So if we zoom out on this, it might end up looking like a bit of an ascending triangle. Uh, looks like very much like the COVID 2020 dump bottom, where it just starts grinding up into these key levels of resistance and then just keeps pushing through them. Um, oh, what have I done here? I need to come back. Just going to use this replay tool so we can see that we actually end up going up. That's annoying. But we're expecting some, like it's consolidated under resistance here. It's not selling off um, just yet. Play it candle by candle. So we're up to here. So we closed inside it. Um, we're technically just consolidating underneath resistance right now. But we are in a downtrend and this is a bearish retest. But it has come back up to the. Um, back up to this, so it's kind of rejected the sell off, and see how this plays out. Alright, so we've pushed back through, after the consolidation, back through this water block. Alright, so this is now essentially where you'd be looking to buy from, this is like the SR flip, how they play. Um, I don't blindly just buy levels like that, I, I like to have the divergence or something else to add the confluence to it. Sort of keep in mind of these um, civil over here as well. All right, let's see how this plays out. We actually pushed through that level. We closed above that level. Um, that's a sign of strength. But at the same time, we've got this little candle here. We could say that was an order block. All right, price was going down. It's been a period here uh, in the inverse direction, closed bullish before then continuing down. So just like this level here was a, a level. This one here looks like it's a bit of a, a level there as well. So in the lower time frame, we can see it's rejected this key level, right? And then come back and tested this level, held it, gone back out of it. So it's actually looking pretty strong for a um, a four hour uptrend at the moment, right? So this is the four hour time frame, and the trend is currently up. It had the potential here to be a bear flag, and this is noteworthy. So we had the impulse of move to the downside, we had the high, the low, the higher high, right, then the higher low, and then the lower high. That's usually the bear flag breakdown. It got rejected here, and that's noteworthy. All right, when a bear flag gets rejected, um, that's of interest. That means there's a potential for a reversal, uh, or at least a run to a, a bearish retest or a, a previous level, like say this. So we'll just press play. So we just keep pushing up through these levels. It's looking pretty good. Um, we're back above this key level here. Um, 
I think what's noteworthy is the apex of this consolidation period, which is, we could probably just call it this black candle here. Maybe this candle there. Right. So whenever a um, triangle forms, and this is noteworthy, I'll just draw it out real quick. Whenever you've got a uh, ascending or a descending or a symmetrical triangle play out, what happens is price just bounces between these this range. But what ha what happens during that is price and time spend the most uh, so price spends the most time in the center of it usually, and then what that does is creates that order block level. Um, so when price comes back to it, usually you reject at it. Okay, so if you were to look at say. Um, 2019's rally to 14,000. It did a nice big um, triangle, and then come down, and then come flying back up, hit the apex, and then rejected, and then did that two more times. So we got the apex here. Um, if we can get above that apex, then we are interested uh, in the market for maybe a bullish play out. Um, but until we get above that, that's just anyone who's been following me for the years knows that I care about the. Um, the middle of the uh, triangle, and especially with a candle like that, right? We could probably even make that both those candles as a bit of an order block, or at least as a supply zone. So rejected once, closed in it. So we'll go to the four-hour time frame. What did that look like? Rejected once, SFP'd here, came to the halfway of the um, the pin, which is that long strategy. It looks like a bull flag here. So measured move to the upside. Um, down, or something like here somewhere. There's potential for a bull flag here. We did get an SFP right here, and we're back in the demand zone. Sorry, the the order block of that. Right. So also the SFP has rejected the small time frame bull flag. That looks pretty ugly like that. If you see a wick like that at the top of a rally, it's usually an indication of um, buyer exhaustion and the sellers are now taking back over. So I'll just press play. So the sellers have, yeah, they've kicked in. Looks like an evening star reversal now with a, um, a, 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 that doji top. You probably see a uh, further continuation to the downside here. We can see it's gone from order block level to order block level. All right, demand through here. So these levels that we drew out ages ago are still playing uh, their role. So this is why this indicator update is going to be great because it keeps all of them on the chart for you. We're losing it, right? It's looking pretty ugly. Um, there's potential for an SFP here. Let's keep an eye on this. So it's gone for an, uh, uh, they call this the morning star, which is the the impulse down, the doji, the impulse up. So it did it did play out as the morning star. We could probably also call this a level now here as well, right? Because we've got the impulse that's moved down, got a um, block, and then further continuation. So it's looking pretty ugly, but it's relevant. The chart's getting pretty busy, but this is just training. So we've come back up. Bullishly retested this candle, then rejected this this one we drew in earlier. Nice clean rejection there, um, but then has since come up and closed uh, back under the swing low here. All right, so probably fixing some further to the upside, um, and just paying attention to this this apex of this candle here, and we'll see how this plays out. So we can delete these fibs. So we've bullishly retested the swing low of that. Right, and now we're coming back up to this. Something noteworthy is the 50% pin rule um, strat that I've got. So if you come up to at least halfway of that, usually there's an opportunity for, for a short. Um, in this case, because you hit the apex of this or the supply zone of this, um, there's an opportunity for a short here based on my strategy of the uh, the pin. Uh, if we get some form of rejection, or you could preempt it in short here. I think with the trend down, right, it's not a bad idea to short. If we do, uh, but also you need to keep in mind there's a inverse head and shoulder forming, and you could be shorting the breakout of the inverse head and shoulder there. Essentially, you could be playing both of them, and you could have gone long on the right shoulder for out here somewhere, maybe once it had um, broken downtrend on the lower time frame for here, and played that and been long, and then you could have hedged your 
uh, long of a short here. That's probably that's probably more that's probably the more responsible play if you're gonna trade um, all of this, right? So press play. It's come through the order block and closed back above, but again, it's just that same setup. Um, we've seen it before. Just that evening star. Of, oh, it's pretty much this, but the wicks to the inverse direction, right? So this shows that Sillers had a moment and it got brought back up, and it's going to look to close above that order block. We are also still below the um, the middle of this triangle here, right? So this, it's, for me. I'm in two minds, right? I'd love to long this, um, but I would have longed it from back here because that's the bull flag structure, the higher low here. So you'd already be long. You're looking to short here. You'd be looking to hedge here. So you're at resistance. Got an SFP there, All right? And that's rejected the uh, inverse in the shoulder breakout. We've lost the order block. This is now looking extremely bearish. We had the setup there for an uh, inverse in the shoulder though, right? And we would have gone long in that if we're out here, if you weren't already long back here. The SFP has rejected the breakout, and now we're seeing that um, rejection. So usually when you reject a, a pattern, a failure, uh, we'll just draw it out. Same thing for a head and shoulder pattern. All of this is a series of highs and lows. If and when you reject the breakdown, usually it's a very bullish event, and you end up making new highs, right? So the inverse works as well. Um, if you have an inverse head and shoulder, and you fail to break out here, and it rolls over, usually you're going to make new lows. It works in both directions. So we've got our key level still. We'll watch them play out. Let's come to our level here. It's been brought up, but it's looking weak, right? The market structure isn't there to be bullish, so we'd be short, or our hedge would still be open, and we'd be milking this. We've got no intention to long yet. There's no long setup. We can see that the bulls tried to save this here above the order block. All right, against this key one here and this key one over here. But at the same time, it closed bearish. All right, and it closed below here. Uh, there. All right, so it closed below this previous swing low. Um, you can maybe look on a, a smaller time frame. Was it really a bullish thing? Not really. So why? Because there's no SFP, right? The the bullish candle ended up being a smaller wick on the uh, inside of this one. Just looks like a dead cat. There's no there's no four hour bullish divergence as well, where there's a lower low to go off. Um, there's yeah, there's no reason to look at too long. If anything, it just looks like a bearish retest from over here, right? I think it just looks like a bearish retest. Back out to the daily. Delete that. Charts are getting pretty busy. Cool. And we've still got our macro time frame bear flag targets down here, right? So either this or this. Let's come back up to the that swing low. Looks like it's getting rejected a second time here. Um, it's never really a good thing. If that, if that closes like that, then it's you, you'd assume further down. Oh, let's move that. You can just see here, like this is the key thing about the order blocks is this is the flow, All right? This is the block. So price flows from block to block, All right? Block up here to the block down here. That period. Drag that across, right? Just inverses. It came from block to block. We've seen uh, potential here for a morning star reversal setup with the pin. Um, it's off a key level, but it's got the. I'm just looking at this from like a. This is there'll be bearish divergence right here on say the four hour, on those two highs, maybe even on the daily. Then we've got our lower high here from a bear flag perspective. If this was a impulsive move down, all right, that's the impulsive move down. This is the high, higher high, and this is the lower high. We'll just watch how these levels play out. Um, we've also got this level over here that's been formed. We haven't drawn in yet. 
this guy. Right. So price blocked periodically here. I've since come back to that and tested that and bounced off that. So the demand has come in from this. Um, we'll see how this plays out. This is like a small time frame, maybe bear flag, maybe on the four hour or something. Yeah, it's like a bit of a bear flag for you. So the impulse move down, the high, the higher low, the higher high, the lower high, right? So I'm not sure if, it, if it's going to be relevant. Just something we'll keep an eye on, right? Is a small time frame one. And you've also got the larger time frame one, which is from here. Again, that same structure. How many times have we drawn this, right? Impulse move down, the high, the low. Um, however, the higher high, which is this part, and then you come down with that lower high trend break, right, which is here. So this is just a small version of this. Impulse move here, impulse move there. So there's a lot of downwards targets, um, a lot of downwards pressure, and at the moment the bears are in control. Right, these bearish patterns are playing out. So we're seeing this this daily level being brought up here. What we could it's a daily level, but we're on the four hour. What we're seeing here is price making a lower low. But the RSI saying to make higher highs for right here, while that price is making those lower lows off this key daily level for us. So we go back to the daily. Right, got the daily level here. We've actually got a pin bar daily um, here kicking in. Off this key order block here, right into this key order block over here. It's actually not a bad place to look to get long or at least chase the bearish retest of that order block. Right, so the four hour says expect a rally. The, we got a four hour rally which took a couple of days. We go back to the four hour look. Nice rally pushes up, consolidates sideways, pushes up. Distribution looks like a bearish retest of so just the key. Um, supply candle over here. Couldn't get above, rejected. You'd be ever expecting um, prices to consolidate here and then push through or just sell off. Right. But that's an SFP through there. That's an SFP. So we'll see that then come down. Seeing this level come a thing again. Now we're losing it. All right. So I'm just going to clean the chart up again. We'll just draw in our uh, order blocks on the left because that's all we've got to work with, right? Um, this guy here, that was a thing. We've now lost this guy. All right. It looks like shit. Um, we'll go back through here. You can say that's like a block in price. Right, so the price was just blocked over here. On another time frame, maybe the weekly or the free day, we might find a cleaner order block um, for this level. We can have a quick look actually. Free day time frame, yeah, here it is. Right, so that's the block. Impulse move to the upside, order flowing, blocked. Comes back to it, tests it, carries on. Comes back to it, tests it. Right, and we can even say that's our free day one there, which might even give us a better looking chart. So now that we've lost this order block on the free day, we would expect to come down to this one again, right? So this goes from block to block. You flow from block to block, order flow to order block. So back to the daily time frame. The RSI is weak, trend is down, looking crap. Um, Cool, cool. Just need to put anything to the left over here. There's not much there. Where are the weekly? Check the weekly out. We could essentially call this a weekly um, order block. It's a very large one though. When something's that large, I don't. I'm not a big fan of it. I'll make it a bit of a lighter color. Go to daily. Sweet. There is a little bit of a 
the man here. So if we go to the swing low of this, back to here. Let's keep an eye on that. All right. So I think this itself is a trading range. All right, from here to here. All right, this this itself is a trading range. So if we end up inside this, we should assume we'd stay inside that and crab until proven otherwise. Price is slowing down here. There's no SFP or anything like that. It looks like we've lost this level for now. I'm going to SFP come in. This looks ugly for now. Getting a reaction to that SFP. We've got this candle here. This guy still. So we'll maybe mark him in. So we haven't retested that since losing it. It was a nice clean break of that. And we've also got that candle here. That was an order. That's a really clean order block, right? So impulse to move down, um, one block, and continuation. Flow, block, flow. We also see a little bit of divergence here, actually. I don't know how well you guys can see this. See how there's a higher high through right here, right? And then you've also got through here as well. So RSI has made a higher high, and then a really small higher high right there. All right, so this is making a lower low. And then you made a little lower low there as well. So there's a couple of different divergences coming in off the weekly order block. Um, and after that, daily SFP pin. Now, I'm not bullish, but it could be a long... Let's move this up. Let's wait. Press play. Even that reaction. Rejection. I didn't even reach this. Um, maybe look on the small time frame what played out there. Looks like it was just bearish divergence. Not even. No, nah, there wasn't even bearish divergence there. Just a rally came back. Looks like shit. All right. Jump back out. A daily here. So this plays out. So it looks like shit. We're in a downtrend. Yes, if he got a small rally, coming back off the swing low of that. That just was like further rejection at the moment, right, with the SFP there. Is that going to close like that and reject that? I don't know. I think it was noteworthy we close inside the block, but that's a decent rally. We've gone from order block to order block. You know, this is a pattern wise like a bit of a broadly descending wedge playing out for here. One, two, three. So there's a decent impulsive move there, right? We did have a daily divergence building up um from back here. So it could be just a daily divergence um impulsive move to the upside here. Maybe just throw this guy in. That's a daily order block there, right? Bearish we retested it once. Maybe we'll come back for a rounded retest because that's a that's a decent impulsive move. So I think we might come back to this order block. So we tap the top of that perfectly, right? Rejected. The next candle didn't sell off. So if this closes like that or higher. Um, then that's actually a sign of rejection of that uh, SFP there or the, the evening star reversal setup. Uh, and we're still trading within this candle here, right? So it's still within. There's hope. Close above that candle. Push through. It's actually not looking too bad there. So it looks like that daily divergence is playing out with the SFP bottom for right here. All right, which is it's pretty straightforward. This happens quite often. And you can just see how price is dancing through these uh, order blocks here. Before we do anything further, we can see that impulse has moved to the upside. Um, yeah. Order block, continuation. Pull back to the order block, new high. Right, that's usually how it works. Remember the, um, the video from earlier on, from the start of this, 
Uh, we did that twice with the head and shoulder in 2020. New high. Cool. Need to keep in mind of this candle, right? So two can two red candles, essentially, and then a, a white one with more red. And then maybe also just keeping an eye on this one back here. All right, because we've already seen this one play out many times throughout this range. This has marked them. So impulsive move down, block, impulsive move down, or flow, block, flow. Rejected once, rejected twice, come back to it, front run. Played with it, rejected, now we're here again. So pretty keen, pretty key level. We'll see how this plays out. It's held it. It's gone straight to order block to order block, which is back to that one. But you see how, it, again, it's the same logic where it's block, flow, block, flow, back to block, order flow and order blocks, All right? So that looks, that looks really shit at the moment, this price action here. You've got the SFP, this is what we'd call a tweezer top, All right? So the two wicks come up like that, into the supply zone, um, Holding this, holding this range here at the moment, though we haven't lost that, so maybe there'll be in a second attempt at it, like a rounded retest before the sell-off. Let's keep an eye on RSI here as well. So, essentially, this could be in a bull flag, and this is trying to continue. Or we're looking at this from a bearish perspective. This is a supply, and this is a UTAD. Right, which is up for us after distribution, which is a Wyckoff um, terminology, right? And essentially, we're just rejecting maybe this key order block here, right? We've got the RSI here, right? We've got a higher high coming in, but the RSI has made a lower low, or a lower high. So we're looking for possible rejection. We've got the SFP, on, I wouldn't call that one really an SFP, but it swung the high and then came back low. It's been rejected by the supply zone. It's pretty ugly price action there to be honest. I'm, fucking, I'm not sure I'm not sure how it's going to play out. I can't remember the, the exact day by day candles. Okay, we have sold off yet. So we have that, that divergence was key. Alright, into supply, divergence was key. And we can see the momentum pretty much has stayed strong until to here, from just flowed from block to block. While doing that, we did form another candle body here, right? So here's of interest. Pretty straightforward how they how how this works, and this is in in an essence naked price action trading because you don't really have indicators if you're not using the RSI. Uh, it definitely helps. But you can just watch how the market structure forms and it just flows, right? Flows from block to block. And then back over here, flows from block to block while creating other blocks on smaller and higher time frames. You can see it like just holds that level there. Does its very best. It's fighting with this. Looks like this is that their weekly level, the daily level. Uh, all, the, all the free day level, all of them are coming in together and creating the strong support for right here, right? And it just keeps bouncing off because there's demand there. And that's usually why you're seeing a, a, a descending triangle play out, which is when you've got a flat um, bottom, right? And then you've got the, the downward trend top. And that is because the bulls keep defending their, their, their level of buying, right? It's a logical place to buy. And you just keep seeing that repeat over and over. Cool. So we'll pause that. Um, so that's that's in real time, like in an essence, how I'd react or how I'd trade or how I'd look to um, navigate these order blocks. And it's I think the easiest way to remember them um, it's just flow block flow. So if you start seeing um, these key levels put in, like if we just zoom in and just mark in, where's a key one? So this guy here, that's a really key one. It's yet to be tested. We haven't come up to it, tested it yet. So, hasn't been confirmed as one, right? But it is there. This one here, 
has been confirmed multiple times. All right, so will support, then became resistance. You could even take that left further and notice that it was part of this and a part of that, all right? Which then brings it further to the part of this one. So it's a really key, key level. So the further left you look, the more confluence of like counter bodies like this, all dancing within it, um, there's some more confirmation. We had this one little one here. That was confirmed as one, right? That little candle block. So as as when price comes back up to these, you're looking for that um, rejection or flow block flow. Here's another one, right? So trend down. We had a block flow, came back to the block, flow down, probably to a previous one. Now we're back here. Um, we're either going to sell off at this one. Um, I have no idea what actually happens next. But we're going to see the, the power of that. So we sold off. We're looking for maybe an inverse in the shoulder here. Um, or a bear flag. But it didn't make the higher high for the bear flag. Uh, and I'll just quickly draw this in. If I can find the right tool. Bear flags usually look like this. So I'll draw them many times, right? So you come down, make the low. Come down. You usually make a higher low and a higher high. It looks like a head and shoulder, right? This doesn't have that. This comes down, makes the low, makes a lower low. It doesn't make the higher high, right? So bulls aren't trying to get too excited. And the, if anything, it would be the bulls keeping it down so they can accumulate more. Because you didn't get that higher high in, or bearish divergence there, or anything like that, it actually looks more credible now for a bottom for bulls uh, underneath resistance over here. So if and when you were to reclaim, um, say, that level, I'd be looking to go long, right? So let's just see how that plays out. I'm just going to draw that order book. Let's go off this candle, actually. It's a better thing. Cool. Where does that reject? There's the SFP there. So that's a decent rally. They didn't even really consolidate underneath this. It's a pretty key level. Interesting. Tweezer top here. SR flip here. Wrecked. Looks like it's back over. I think what's important to note from that is the measured move of the inverse inner shoulder. Alright, so it would have been from here to here, from the point of break from there to there. It actually reached its target, right? So you need new structure in an essence to get further. Usually it's when you see a bull flag form to go further. Curious. Um, Alright, so I'll wrap that up. It's quite a long video, um, but I think these are one of the most important um, technical um, forms of trading you can use. They're extremely powerful when used correctly um, and add a lot of confluence and you can use them on all time frames. Right? The weekly ones, there's three day ones. Um, like if you look at this here from the weekly point of view, like here's one, right? Trend is down, you've got one. You come back up to it, rejected it. So on a small time frame, what did that look like? We finally lost it. And then in a few weeks, we end up back at it. All right, twice. So just identifying that one weekly order block could have saved you a lot of hassle. So the indicators, um, the update that's coming out will have multiple time frame order blocks that'll literally just paint them on the chart instantly and automatically um, from the time frames that you choose. So if you want the weekly, the daily, and the four hour, which is what I'd recommend, you can have them all on your chart um, and then color code them so you know which ones are which. So it, when you get a four hour rally this intense into a weekly order block, probably not a bad idea to take some profit or hedge a short or however you want to play it. All right. All right, I'll wrap it up um, and get this uploaded for you. Hopefully you learned something.